Pixels. This is my computer. A fan, but uh, RXB 2012 and RE version 2011 in the cartridge slot. With a P box uh, with a SCSI card, AMS card, uh, RS232 card, uh, one disc, two disc drives, uh, SCSI drives here in this other box, RS232 cable, and it's tied to a regular PC, IBM. And this IBM has um, PC99 will load it, as you can see. And I've typed in call user RS232 on this computer here through the RS232 cable to the TI. Let's go to this one. And here's what we're going to do. Uh, I have a program on disk one, so if we do this, hang on a second. I'm going to put the here. I don't know if you can read that or not. Anyways, as you can see, I typed in Ogus Lone Cannon and list RS-232. Let's go into the RS-232. So let's push enter. Okay, and then we go over to the PC over here. We'll push enter. And what happens is user is now going to take a program through the RS-232 from this computer as it's listing it out. So that's what's doing right now, and the user's picking this. Now, there is one thing, though. At the end of the program, the list program does not tell it to use enter at the end of it. I suppose I could have set it up so that it lists it out of the RS-232 in that fashion, so that each line has an enter key at the end of it like it normally does, instead of a carriage return. It works out the same way because the uh, TI doesn't care. That's why how user works on uh, RXB. So there's the end. Now what we have to do now is we have to fix it over here. And how I do that, just a second. Well, you can't see the bloody screen. No, oh, anyway, it's going to be time to I have to... Um, I have to type in R open number one, RS-232 output, then I have to print out character 13. And the reason why is so it'll end the program in the, the other computer. See? Because the cursor is waiting for input from user. And normally we get it off the disk drive when you make a file, but when you're typing in directly in the other computer, I'm controlling the other computer from this one. So the problem is I have to tell it what to do with everything it does. It's the same as if I was typing in the computer. The thing is, though, it doesn't take the commands the same way. It has to take it through the RS-232. Thus, I have to send the character 13 to tell it to drop down to the next line. Now, I can't tell it to run the program. So here we go. All right, so once again, here we go. I had to tell it print number one, run. Then I had to tell it to print number one, character 13. Now, it won't do anything until then. Now, I've already set the run over here. So there's the run. See it? There we go. So, anyways, over here we have to hit 13, and then it says it. Now the program is running. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But it's running the program. Now, we can go the opposite direction. And I can do that is escape. Q, enter. And I can run PC99 again. Pushing a key. Oops. Go down to RxB. And uh, here we go over here. Now, then this one, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the opposite end. We're going to close this file. Let me type it. Oh, 
Okay, so we typed call user RS-232. So now this is doing the exact, exact same thing I was doing in the other one, the TI is doing it this time. So we have the TI doing what I already had the other one do. So we're doing it the opposite direction. So here we go. So it's probably the same. Uh, All right, so what I typed is open number one, RS-232 output, print number one, call clear. As you can see over here, call clear is sitting here on the screen. So now I can put in the, that character 13. So there's the print character 13, and it has an it kit yet, so let me push the enter key, and there you go, we did a call clear on the other computer. So I'm controlling this computer from this one. I'll go either way, back and forth. What's really kind of weird is I haven't done it yet, but I could actually make one talk to the user on one, which talks to the user on the other one back and forth, so they can both go back and forth. If I wrote a program, I could make a really interesting situation where the two of them would talk back and forth at the same time, from extended basic. It would be kind of weird. One is controlling the other one, which is controlling that one, which is controlling that one, back and forth. Kind of, be kind of fun to do. I haven't done it yet, and I can do a uh, version of that in the future. But let's do something that RxB can do here. Hang on a second, I'm gonna put this down for a second. Okay, so I typed in a command here. Whoops, I had a problem. I want to fix that just a second. All right, so I had a problem here. So here's what the command is. Print number one, call cat. Now I have to put the string within a string, so it's going to be three quote marks. So here we go. And for some odd reason, it didn't send the command. Call user still working? Let's see. Oh, uh, I canceled the user when I did something. But anyways, it did work. There it is. So if I print character 13, it should send the command. Alrighty, so there's the command. Print number one, character 13. Let's hit enter. And there it goes. It's cataloging this drive over here. So I'm controlling one computer from another. So this is my first demo. Um, I've already shown you can transfer a program. I've already shown you can command back and forth between the two of them. Uh, the next demo, I'll give you a little more involved in it. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh, by the way, this is the computer I'm using here. This is a... Uh, Apple computer that I use. Just so you can see it better. Keyboard. Here's the uh, computer itself. It's a Mac Pro. 293 megahertz, almost three gigahertz. Uh, well, it's eight core computer. It's quad core, it's called. But each one of the cores has two cores, so it's actually eight cores. And it has four one terabyte hard drives. It's a 2009 Mac, uh, DVD ROM drives, of course. Anyways, that's the computer I use. It's a gaming mouse, too. G9 gaming mouse. So, anyways, uh, I will talk to you guys later on this. Uh, see you later.